Untap, 16 Mile Brewing Company. Hi, I'm James Knott, and I am here with Chad Campbell, one of the co-owners of 16 Mile Brewing Company here in Georgetown, Delaware. Chad, thanks for being on the show. Thanks what, for having us, James. What is kind of 16 Mile's like niche? Uh, 16 Mile, uh, we aspire to make bold, sessionable style, uh, sessionable ales uh, that have a British heritage, uh, yet an American twist. Uh, we are uh, local guys uh, that aspire to have a regional craft brewery right here in Georgetown. Now, you're local. Uh, did you have a big brewing background before you opened up a brewery? Not at all. Not at all. My, my business partner and I, uh, Brett McRae, uh, we, our goal was to open a small business in our hometown. We both grew up very close uh, to the brewery here, and uh, we, we wanted to put a small biz right back in our own community and have our families uh, grow up and uh, prosper here locally, just like we did. Okay. Do you think that's affected the direction of 16 Mile? Um, I would definitely say it is. It's, you know, it's, it's certainly, there's no bigger investment. Uh, from a personal standpoint than putting your name on a product and carrying it to market. And uh, you know, when you've got families involved, we're certainly a, f a couple of families run and own this business. So, you know, there's no larger investment uh, than that. Yeah. Is that about the most stressful thing you've ever done? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's something that happened uh, about 10 years ago at five o'clock on a Saturday that was also pretty stressful, but that's going so pretty well so far, thanks to the brewery by and large. So, yeah, right do you think that, I mean, do you <laughs> it's just our CO2 tank, yeah. You know, we're in a real live working brewery, so <laughs> you may hear some noises here today that you don't normally hear on our show. Yep. Uh, do you think, that, like, is 16 Mile, like, on a really good growth curve right now, like, where you feel comfortable? We are. We're, we're, we're up about 230% uh, this time last year. Um, we're, uh, we just completed an expansion of physical space here at the brew site, uh, which is... Uh, it's basically one third a new tavern retail shop, a place where uh, patrons can begin their tours here. And then we get into a uh, new brew tank uh, space and then we have a, a really nice walk-in cooler that we've added as well. Now you're in Delaware. You're, you're kind of in the shadows of this other really big famous brewery. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of them, Dogfish Head. <laughs> sure, yeah, I have actually heard of them. They yeah. are, they're, they, you know, one of their mottos is kind of extreme brews, off-centered ales. Yep. Are you the opposite of that? I, I'd say we're very complimentary, you know, as opposed to anything that would compete with that fleet of beers. You know, uh, you know the, the flavor profiles we go after are, you know, literally, you know, just about opposite from what anything that comes out of Dogfish's doors. And, uh, you know, we've got absolute respect for Mr. Collagione and what he does over there uh, with his staff and, and his promotional efforts. You know, I grew up here. I've been watching the guy down the street grow uh, for, since, you know, for the last, what, pushing 16 years, I believe you'd say. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you no, know, nothing but good things to say. So, what, uh, you know, I, I noticed that the alcohol content on a lot of your beers, it like, maxes out at 6.1 you have yep 5.9 4.1 and then all the other ones are 6.1 percent i yeah. mean what is the the magic about that number it's it's just really a, a testament to uh, uh consistency but it's it's being precise on the brewing end you know we we do things the same way every single time uh, we do not add any extra sugars or anything that would boost fermentation therefore your abv so you know it's it it, it kind of you know, it, it naturally ferments to those levels, every, you know, plus yeah. or minus a tenth or two, you know, batch to batch, which is if you, anybody can tell the difference between those, <laughs> kudos to you. But uh, no, it's, it's just the, the way things naturally unfold. So is it kind of a keep it simple, stupid philosophy? Well, it is. Um, you know, we've, we've, with the brews that we've put out, we've achieved the flavor profiles that we were desiring. And so now it's about replication and, you know, keeping your beer nice and clean. Yeah, so you used to do metal bottles. We did, which is pretty unique. But now you're doing Absolutely. glass bottles. Yep, we have turned why, the page. Why yep. the switch? Uh, largely business decision. Uh, the the aluminum 22s, which you may recall, um, were were great from a marketing standpoint. Uh, they were also great from a production standpoint. In that, 
we were, we were a two to three man operation when, when those vessels were around. We are no longer that, we have greater demand. It's time to turn the page to the six pack arena and, and literally get more beer out in front of more people. It's no longer a single serve vessel. Um, the 22s from a production standpoint also, you need to purchase anywhere from 30 to 50,000 units of a particular brand of yours at one time. So it becomes a storage issue as well. Right. You know, when you have six brands and you know, I got 50,000 units of each one, where are we putting all these empty aluminum containers? Yeah, so. uh, you have six brands here. You're, you're mainly in Delaware mm -hmm. and right. surrounding areas. Right. Like, is there a goal like to just, uh, how big are you gonna get? Are you gonna be Anheuser-Busch or? <laughs> not at all, not at all. Uh, we, Brett and I have really sat down and and uh, had heart-to-heart -heart talks about where we want to take the company. Uh, we want to be a regional craft beer producer. Uh, we want to sell beer in the state of Delaware predominantly and the states that touch Delaware by land or, or water. Okay. Uh, what's your so. flagship, um, what's your flagship or best-selling beer? And like, you know, if, if a craft beer nerd comes through, like, what's the one you're going to hand them first? Or are they all just too fresh we, we, to decide? We, we try to qualify it a little bit with a couple of quick questions. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, early at the onset of microbrew and in the, in the revolution that's happening, it's a high hop, high, high alcohol uh, uh, beverage that's, that's coming through. We get a lot of patrons that have at least equal respect for the malts that are involved uh -huh. and the complexities that those malts bring. So... You know, it's, it's very easy for me to say that our best sellers are Blues Golden Ale and Inlet IPA, which are the opposites of each other on the, on the bittering scale. Yeah. So. Do you feel like, I mean, we just had a sample of all your beers and they're delicious. I think my favorite was the Harvest Ale. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's probably the one that I would recommend first. But do you feel, you know, as like Stone Brewing Company is like a hop forward brewery, are you a malt forward brewery or... Or is it too well, early to categorize? <laughs> that's what I would say, James. It's, it's too early to categorize because, you know, we will be doing um, more beers as we go along that are going to really exercise the palates, you know, that we have established with our patrons and the new people that come through our brewery that, you know, as the season comes along this spring and summer. So, you know, just keep an eye out for different things. We've got some really cool brews planned for the rest of the year, some collaboration efforts. Uh, I think you t had a chance to taste uh, our oyster stout, mm -hmm. which was, uh, you know, you probably had more than I have, uh, actually. <laughs> so, uh, but um, looking forward to doing things like that with other breweries. Uh, you know, and uh, I think you met Klaus Hagelman. He's got a lot to do with those efforts as well. So. Yeah. Well, it seems like you guys are expanding. You have a new, what do you call this room on the, behind you? Yeah, this, this is a, basically just an additional footprint of what we already do. We'll have a, uh, once we max out this space, we'll be able to do about 10,000 barrels per year in annual uh, production. And we've got a nice walk-in cooler. Yeah, your uh, new cooler is about, what, 10 times bigger than yeah, the old one? Yeah, it's it's. It's huge, uh, it's very, and, and it's critical to what we do here. Absolutely. And what are the plans with the tasting room? The tasting that's room, new too. yeah, it, that, that space is gonna take on a life of its own. It really is gonna, mani we're gonna let it manifest itself as it, as it really wants to, as, as the locals and as our, our beer enthusiasts find us. You know, right now you can come in and, and enjoy a pint at the bar. We've got a couple of TVs. Uh, we are not open late. We don't operate as your typical, you know, tap room late night or anything. We do not sell, uh, sell food, um, but you're welcome to bring in a sandwich if you'd like to. Also, you can buy a six pack over the counter. We growler fills all the time coming through. Um, if you need a keg, you can buy it over the counter in that space. So, uh, all right. Well, so. thanks for the tour. Likewise, it's been awesome getting to thanks come here. Thanks for joining us, James. I appreciate your efforts in, in joining us here. All right, so. it's been a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, Chad Campbell, I'm James Knott. This is the 16 Mile Brewing Company in Georgetown, Delaware. And this is your Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority.